Down the shore, there's a box under the sand. It's a case of catch me if you can. Make a mess of any other man, but darling, if you wanna do, count your steps one, two, three. Make your mark on little low me. When you come to something waiting to be free, do it as fast as you can. Under the sun, right in the sand, holding me in the palm of your There's a stigma on mental illness in general, and it's so evident by the responses, by the notes and responses that I saw under this video. Um, there's, a, there's a huge stigma. And it's so wrong. <laughs> um, the, the person who made the video is demonstrating signs of depression, but does not believe that depression or that mental illness is a real thing. They don't think that there's such a thing as mental illness. No such thing. And they think that... Um, if you have depression, you have you're you're not a good person. You're a bad person. Uh, who taught this person that? Anyway, I I, I know I'm just kind of like I'll just get to the to the thing. My comment, my first comment under this video was, "You have an illness, dear girl. Other than that, there's nothing wrong with you. Depression causes the kind of thinking you're demonstrating here. You can learn." to not attach to these kind of thoughts. You're pretty and young, and there's so much you can do with your time. Lots of people struggling with the lots of people struggling with depression. You are helping them even with this video by showing people they aren't alone. You of course will amount to something. You are amounting to something every day. Oh, I just came to where you mention your weight. Me too. Depression makes you not care anymore. You remind me of me. I'm a hermit. I'm, I'm in hermit mode and have been for a year now. If you want to PM me, you may. There is hope, hugs. I thought I was writing her a nice little note. Because her, her video really affected me. And her response was, now, I've mentioned in past videos about distorted thinking, about how depression is a chemical imbalance in your body. It's a chemical imbalance in your body, and it affects how your brain works. It affects how your brain processes thoughts. It affects, it puts filters up. So basically, you see things through a screen, and they become distorted. Of course, the person who has depression doesn't understand that that's how they are perceiving the world. And that makes it so much harder, because everything is it becomes painful to them. I thought I wrote her a, a nice, encouraging little note. See, now I'm starting to understand a little bit what my friends went through trying to help me when I was depressed. Because the kind of responses that I got from this girl probably were not much different than the kind of responses they got from me. She writes me, I was subscribed to your wonderful videos. How could you say such things to put me down? I'm only responding to what I feel in my heart. Please, I'm not a bad person. I hope you understand. You know, this is so much echoing the words that I said when I was at my worst. I'm not a bad person. I don't even know how many times I said this to my friends. I'm not a bad person. Everything was about my worth as a human being. My worth. As a human being, I'm not a bad person. 
No! And, you know, it's interesting under this video, I read some of the other responses to it. Other people, oh, I've had depression before. Other people mention depression or, or say, I can totally relate, you know, you know, because they see the same things I see. And they mention depression. Not one of them say it's an illness. And so she doesn't respond to them like she did to me. She doesn't respond like she's been a insult, like she's got hurt feelings to them because they're not saying that depression that she has an illness. They're saying that she has oh you have depression. <laughs> it's not an illness. She anyway, she mentioned she mentioned too that it's she has insecurities. It's not depression. Um Actually, I'm reading these out of order because I just realized that some of the replies were hidden. Her first reply to my note was, I know in my heart there's no such thing as mental illness. She put, you know, around illness. Only insecurities. And yes, I am very insecure. I could take forever in trying to explain what I truly feel. But depression is for most a result of bad misfortunes and traumatic events from a person's past. And a person is so used to the emotional torment that it is all they can that, that it is all they know and chooses to hold on to the pain and torture. There's nothing sick about it. She doesn't believe depression's an illness. She doesn't believe it's a, it's a physical illness. She thinks it's just people who've had a lot of bad luck and they just can't let, they can't get past their bad misfortune. She thinks it's just people who are insecure. I wrote, this is my, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is my second note to her. You can't get out of bed. That is not insecurities, but full-blown depression, which is not a mental illness, but a physical one. You have a chemical imbalance in your body that affects how your brain processes thoughts. I have it and have had it off and on my entire life. As long as you are in denial, you will not start taking charge of it. It will only take charge of you. And for there's no such thing as as for there's no such thing as mental illness. Try telling my mom that. She has had her life utterly destroyed by paranoid schizophrenia, and I got to watch it happen. No such thing. That's as that's as absurd as saying to a cancer patient, "There's no such thing as cancer." That's when she wrote me her note that, why are you saying these things to put me down? I'm only responding to what I feel in my heart. I'm not a bad person. I hope you understand. So then I wrote her. This is my last note to her. She hasn't written me back. I absolutely am not putting you down. And I absolutely do not think you're a bad person. I care. I, I recognized in your video what I have gone through myself. It hurts and I feel badly seeing you hurting so much. Why do you think I'm putting you down? Depression is just as much a medical illness as migraines are. Or having a broken leg. Do you realize something like one in every five people will suffer from depression during their lifetime? You are not alone, and there's nothing wrong or dysfunctional about you. And I could be wrong. Maybe you don't have depression at all. But your video reminded me of me when I did. And that's wrong because I use that as a past tense. I was trying to be caring and supportive with my response. Sorry if this hurt your feelings. Yeah, I, I said, I said, when I did, referring to my depression in past tense. I don't think I, I don't think I'm over it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not even on medication. I haven't been for five months. And you know what pisses me off? I'm not skinny. 
I should have miraculously slimmed it down after I stopped taking those meds because the meds made me fat obviously <laughs> you know well, I'm also f older you're you know the, met the metabolism slows down a lot when you get older I'm seriously thinking about getting on um, if I get if I get insurance and can get a doctor I'm going to see about getting on prescription diet pills something that will help ramp up my metabolism because I don't want I don't I physically cannot be fat I physically cannot be fat. I have really bad knees. And when I start gaining weight, it really, it really fucking messes with how I can, how I'm able to get around. And I don't like that. So anyway, I don't, I don't, I shouldn't have used past tense when I said what I did. I most likely do still have depression. It's an illness. It's a chemical imbalance. You don't just shake it off and walk away. You don't get over it. It's... You know, and, and people do get over it. I mean, they can get better. But once you have it, it's very likely, it's very, the chances are greater that you'll get it again sometime in your life. It's kind of like alcoholism in that way. You know, somebody who drinks and they, and they get, you know, they, they kick the habit. They get over it. <clears throat> the same with smoking, I think, too. But it's so much easier for them if they, you know, 10 years down the road, they start drinking or smoking again. I think it's so much easier for them to get right back, you know. It's like you can't just kick the habit and then go back because then you're addicted again. Anyway, I don't, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm digressing. Here's that word. Um, it's an illness, and it's not something to be ashamed of. And this girl obviously thinks that it is. Other notes down this, uh, beneath this video that she put up, she refers to her. Oh, I've I I think about su I consider suicide. She mentions that she's depressed to the point where she considers suicide. It's just part of what she's just came out as part of what her little her her thing, you know. And other people are writing here. I've had depression two thirds of my life. I am 99% recovered now. You remind me of myself at my lowest point. Every single thing you say in this video was a negative statement. You need to stay away from negativity at all costs. Cut negative people out of your life. Stop listening to depressing music. That's what I did. I just, I just love to listen to. It, I don't, I don't mean to. In, say anything bad about him. I, I like Josh Groban. I think his music is beautiful. But I would literally have tears pouring down my face listening to some of his music. And I've kind of stopped listening to him as much as I was. Stop listening to depressing music. It's very important that you stop feeding the monster. Stop watching negative television shows like Jerry Springer. Don't speak any words that vibrate negativity. Instead, write down a list of things you're grateful for. Add to that list every day. Recite and focus on that list every day. Make gratitude a habit, not a negative, not negative thinking. I understand exactly what you're going through. I beat depression, trust me. Awesome. Awesome comment. Now, what's funny is her response. Uh, I don't like Jerry Springer shows. I only wish most could truly understand. It's not something someone like me can just snap out of. See, in a way, it's like she understands that this is more than just insecurities. I find comfort in dark poetry, art, and nature, and death and doom gothic metal music, as well as deep medit meditational music with Alpha Delta Theta waves. Most people like to believe that these type of interests symbolize or worsen depression, but for some, find comfort in these things help me to cope. Yes, I will still consider suicide a lot. Yes, I still consider suicide a lot. I won't lie and never hold anything back anymore. I appreciate you wanting me to feel as if there's hope, but every time I do, it blows up in my face. There's the suicide note that I read. Um, that was an excellent 
paragraph that this woman wrote. Actually, it's a guy. The one that gave her the tips is a guy. Because depression is a is an illness that men and women both get. It's even more deadly for men because when men contemplate suicide, they usually commit to it. They don't just they don't just you know talk about it a lot and threaten to a lot and cause their friends to worry a lot. They don't do that as much. They they talk about it, then they do it. So yeah, I think depression is even more dangerous for men. But then again, my 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 ex husband's Sil aunt Sylvia put a gun to her head and blew her brains out. So yes, <laughs> it kills women too. In a way, it can destroy your life as effectively as paranoid schizophrenia can destroy your life. I I, st I think I'm not going to write to this person anymore because I'm upsetting her because I called it an illness and that was stepping over her line. But it is an illness. I don't understand why there's shame in it. Why is there shame in it? It's as much an illness as any other physical illness people get, like migraine headaches, or fibromyalgia, or arthritis, or carpal tunnel syndrome, or cancer, or the flu. It's a physical illness. It's a chemical imbalance. You know, you get, you drink too much, you get drunk. You know, you're fucking up with the chemicals in your body. It's just, there's, your brain is part of your body. It, you know, when you, when you eat something, when you eat something and you get food sickness, you fucked up your stomach. It's the same thing. You fucked up your brain because of chemicals in your body. If your brain is fucked up, like your stomach is fucked up when you get an upset stomach. It's, your brain is fucked up. It doesn't take away from your value and your worth. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, she, she, she talks about, I do have in, in another one of her comments here, she, she says, I know I have good traits, like, like somehow having depression makes, puts that in doubt. That she doesn't have good traits? Of course she has good traits. She's just, she's a great person. She's a wonderful person. She has depression. Um, I think I wrote her something else too. On the subject of good traits. If I can find it, here it is. Somebody wrote, been watching you get worse and worse for about four years now. It's sad. Here's another good example of distorted thinking. So, not even my accomplishments were noticed? There's a saying going around, and I feel it 200%. People will never notice when you do good, but do one small bad thing, and you're in a lot of trouble. Even lots of others say they have seen several good traits in me. It is always me that refuses to see any of that. That's what's said. See, she feels like she's under attack, that her good, her good qualities as a human being are under attack just because somebody says, I feel you, I see, see you getting worse with this illness. And suddenly she's like, <laughs> and she doesn't, she doesn't, she immediately leaps to the conclusion that her accomplishments aren't being noticed. It didn't say anything like that, but that's what she read in this little tiny sentence that this person wrote. You don't even see my accomplishments. You, it's like, whoa, way, way out of proportion what she, what she read into this one little sentence. And then she feels like she's under attack and that her good traits aren't being noticed. I wrote this is this is the uh, the trait one that I that I read you have this idea that having depression is a bad trait or that you can't be a good person if you have depression you're so wrong about that you are you are attaching to negative thoughts and those thoughts are often untrue yet they have the power to get you down until you learn to not attach to them Run, don't walk, and go by loving what is 
a book by Byron Katie. It taught me how to recognize the distorted thought patterns my depression was causing for me and how to stop attaching to them. And that's, that's how I kind of want to end this little video. Um, it's, a, it's an illness. It's, an, it's a chemical imbalance. It affects how your brain processes thoughts. 